I have no idea who Daniel Tosh is. Never heard of him in passing or anything. But I got to tell you something. The name of this video is how do 90% of Americans have jobs? And I got to tell you something. I don't care if a single word this man utters is not funny. This topic is phenomenal. I purposely do not like shopping. I don't go shopping because of customer service. I do not know. And listen, as somebody who is employed, now granted, I don't work a customer service job. Um, but... Uh, even if you don't, even if you work corporate America, which I do, you, I, I mean, people are just, I, I don't know, man. I don't know. I don't know. But I, 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 I see why so many companies are heading towards robots and artificial intelligence. Um, I do not support it. I'm completely with the Hollywood strike right now. Um, it's going to suck, even though I don't really watch TV. There's nothing on TV that I really watch. But it's going to suck because the shows that I am excited and anticipated for um, probably won't get them. But it is what it is. But Daniel Tosh, again, I've never heard of this man. And I got this request a while back, and I'm just now getting to it. So, y'all know because this is our first reaction, we got to do some research and find out who Mr. Daniel Tosh is. Now, Daniel Tosh is an American comedian, writer, and producer. Um, after graduating from the University of Central Florida with a, a degree in marketing, Tosh moved to Los Angeles to pursue a career in comedy. Okay, I can't wait to find out why such a huge transition. I mean, to go to school for marketing and immediately after getting your degree and setting yourself up for a pretty good job straight out of college, you say, bump that, I want to do comedy. Not like I haven't heard it before, but I'm just amazed by people who do that. His career uh, accelerated in 2001 after performance on The Late Night Show with David Letterman. He would go on to appear in other national shows, leading to his own 30-minute special on Comedy Central two years later. From 2009 to 2020, Tosh was the host of Comedy Central series Tosh.0. I think I've seen that on the guide, on like the on, on on your TV guide. I think I've seen that before. I've never watched it. I'm not gonna sit here and lie to you, but I've one million percent seen Tosh.0. I've seen that before. Gotcha. Okay. In addition to Tosh.0, he is known for his deliberately offensive and controversial style of black comedy and as the star of stand-up comedy tours and specials. Alright, so we got a controversial guy. Um, the last guy we reacted to, Peter K., he wasn't controversial, at least that joke we reacted to. Um, who else? Ricky, he embodies controversial. Uh, Patrice O'Neill embodies controversial. Uh, who else have we reacted to on this channel? Um, Bill Burr embodies controversial. Um, so I like that. I like guys that push the needle, do critical thinking, think for themselves, and um, do it in a comedic way. I really like that. Um, so all right, I've never heard of him though. He's had a, a decade-plus show on Comedy Central. Appears to be really successful. I mean, I, I don't see how you could do something for 10-plus years and not be 
not be successful. So we're talking about a successful guy. I don't know how I, I've never heard of him, but I'm excited. Off of the title alone, I'm sold. So I can't wait to hear what he has to say. I'll add my own commentary afterwards. But I'm excited to hear this. Daniel Taj, how do 90% of Americans have jobs? Let's go. It's great to be here in America. Oh, yeah. The greatest country in the world, if you haven't traveled a lot. Do we have to constantly scream we're number one? It's always the people that live in the most boring parts of this country that scream the loudest. People in Kansas, we're the greatest country in the world. It's like, do you guys have internet there? You ever seen a photo of Fiji? I've never been to Fiji, but I've seen photos. It looks pretty amazing. It's hard to think we're better than that. We're top 10. Maybe if we started screaming that every day, maybe terrorists would stop trying to saw our heads off. <laughs> We're top 10. And they'd be like, that's fair. <laughs> it was that number one stuff that was getting old. America's basically turned into one of these factories where we just have a sign up. Like, it's been 22 days since our last horrible thing. And it's like, oh. All right, rip it down. We're back at zero again. <laughs> These things just keep happening, you know, whether it's Ferguson or Baltimore. I can solve racist cops. That's an easy fix. But nobody comes to me for the answers. <laughs> you want to get rid of that forever? How about this? Only black people should be allowed to be cops. <laughs> Boom, problem solved. <laughs> and if any of you have issue with this, it's because you're racist. Well, what about white people? White people can be firefighters. We're more outdoorsy, it makes sense. <laughs> white people, firefighters, black people, cops. Who wants tickets to the softball game now? <laughs> yeah, it's gonna get pretty tense. Might wanna put in a mercy rule. <laughs> and the next time we have one of these tragedies, inevitably we will, and you happen to be so unfortunate enough to know the person that's being accused of the crime, do us all a favor and don't get on TV the next day and be like, I lived next to him for 32 years. I never could have seen this coming. <laughs> Maybe you should be locked up for six months. <laughs> I find nothing more disrespectful. You never could have seen it coming. I've never met anyone in my entire life that I couldn't wrap my brain around the fact that they are capable of awful things. Literally no one. My mom could blow up a nursery. And if you put me on TV the next day and I was completely honest with myself, I'd be like, I can fucking see it. No, it makes sense. Sometimes when I was a kid, I'd come home from school, she wasn't happy to see me. I think she hates children. Ladies, know that every man you're sitting next to tonight, if you could get into their head and see every thought they have ever had, you would immediately pull out a gun and blow your head off. Because trust me, they're capable of anything. All day long, every day, nothing but twisted, weird, awful shit is just going round and round and round. And what do you do at night? You snuggle up next to them because you're so happy that you're not alone. And I think that says more about you. That notion that your parents raised you on, stand by your man, if you're insane, the second your man gets accused of anything, you immediately distance yourself. Just be like, I don't know what the fuck he's into. And buy clothes in the next town, we'll forgive you. By the way, I do love this country. We're the only place with any diversity. The entire planet is segregated. You realize that when you watch international sports. Like I was trying to watch the World Cup, uh, despite hating it. I get it, soccer's the most popular sport on the planet. That's because half the world can't afford AC. And that's about how long you have to run just to get tired enough to fall asleep in these god... That might be my favorite joke up to this point. Can I just say, he reminds me of, um, oh, what's my man's name? Uh, the one, the, oh, y'all know who I'm talking about. 
I, I I can't let it go. I gotta I gotta fight the one that dated Amy Schumer. What's his What's his name? Amy Schumer's. Egg, is is it his? Is it? Yeah, no, not this guy. Who? What's that guy's name? X, come here. This guy, what's his name? Uh, Anthony Jaselnik. Anthony, he reminds me of Anthony Jaselnik. Is it's a it's a real laid back, um, almost not trying to be. Fu- I, it's not exactly like Anthony, but he just kind of reminds me of him just a little bit. Um, I do like his perspective on stuff. That that joke, um, well, not even the joke, but that thing about I hate when people say that too. You know, oh, I can't believe that such and such, you know, did this. You know, it's like, come on, man. I mean, now, I don't think. You like when somebody like if your neighbor, if you find out they just got dead bodies in their house, you know, I could understand how you wouldn't see that. But it's like, I don't know, to be surprised by anything nowadays, like it's like we've seen it all. We've seen priests, everybody from presidents to priests to teachers to like. Everybody's capable of doing something. I don't care what your occupation is, what you you know, where, where you come from. It's like everybody got you know. It's just a matter of self control and what exactly crazy stuff you indulge in. But I mean, yeah. And then that AC joke that was great. He's cool. He's cool so far. He hasn't cracked me up with anything, but I do like his perspective. I do like that. Taking countries. You ever try to gamble on soccer? What's the over-under? 0.5? Hmm. How much time's left? It's a secret. I'm out. But we have diversity. Other teams don't. Or if you look at the Olympics, you look at our uh, U.S. gymnastics squad. We have an Asian girl, a white girl, a black girl. Look at the Chinese squad. Any guesses? Did you guess exclusively Chinese bitches? Yeah, that's all that's ever been on that team. That's all that will ever be on that team. And they wonder why they're not getting golds anymore. Well, you better get a Harlem in China. You think snapping together iPads all day is tough? It is not as tough as it used to be. Now they have suicide nets around their building so they can jump out, bounce right back. Sorry, boss, just need some fresh air. Back to making Americans more stuff? You got it. This is a tough joke to do as a white comedian, but here goes. Because where this country is now, from where we came from, is pretty remarkable. There's nothing more shameful in our country's past than slavery. Okay, that's horrible. But I've grown up in a generation where I've idolized black people my entire life. They are better at everything. So the fact that we pulled off slavery, I've already said it's awful. That's off the table. I'm just saying it's kind of neat. I mean, at any point, they could have been like, you know we can just run away, right? And you will never catch us. And if you do, we will beat the living shit out of you. All right. That's about how well that joke should go over. There's a fine line between appreciating the sarcasm and, ooh, this feels like a rally. And you did well. That's a joke I do not do everywhere. That's a joke. If the audience gets a little too excited, I shut it down. You start hearing a couple yee-haws, trouble's a brewing. Soon as yee-haw hits a certain octave, hate crime in T minus 10, 9. 
The unemployment rate in our country is around six and a half percent. I'm told that's pretty good. I could care less. <laughs> I wish a president would have the balls to say what I'm about to. 10% of Americans don't deserve jobs. Good night. <laughs> like, that's a number I can get my head around. Of course, there's exceptions to that. That's not who we're talking about. But if you don't think 10% of Americans are lazy pieces of shit, then you have never traveled anywhere. Because the number that blows me away is that over 90% of Americans have jobs. Who the fuck is hiring you morons? <laughs> because I wouldn't. The sense of entitlement, everyone thinks they deserve more than they have. No one's content. Young kids, I won't even talk to them anymore because you parents have done just a bang up job. If I meet one more kid and ask him what he wants to do when he gets older and he replies, I'll be famous like you, I'm gonna kick him in his teeth. You're never gonna be famous. Never. You have no chance. I didn't get here because I work hard. I have a gift from God. Everybody gets their 15 minutes of fame, buddy. Excuse me? That's an average. Yeah, that's zero for you, 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 zero, 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 20 years, zero, 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 zero. Everybody gets 15 minutes. You know Andy Warhol was on drugs when he said that, right? He didn't think he'd be quoted for the rest of eternity, let alone taken seriously as an artist. You ever go into like a cute local cafe and an artist has their work for sale on the walls? Has anybody ever not walked up, looked at the price and gone, who the fuck do they think they are? <laughs> Just once, I'd like to walk into somebody's home and be like, wow, that is a beautiful piece. Where did you get it? And they're like, oh, funny story. I was getting a spinach wrap the other day for lunch and I had $750 burning a hole in my pocket. And I was like, hey guys, unbolt this from your urinal and get it into my living room. You know what the unemployment rate in China is? Neither do I, because I'm American, I'm fucking stupid. It's gotta be low, right? Those people get up at three in the morning to practice the violin for four and a half hours, then they work on math for 12 hours, and whatever's left, they're ninjas. If you think for one second we will ever catch up with them, you are out of your mind. Just sit at home and be patient until they take over. And quite frankly, they deserve our country. I go, oh shit, China's here. Do we take off our shoes? How does this work? Ah, uh, okay. I like him. He's cool. He's cool. He, he's not... So, his style of comedy... It's not, uh... Punch you in, it's not the punch you in your face type like Anthony or Patrice. It's not set ups. It's not set up the way a Bill Burr or a who else have I reacted to? I felt like I reacted to a lot of people. Um, you know, like his jokes, they almost sound like dinner table jokes like just jokes somebody can tell at a dinner table um but it's perspective i like it i like it. it it's 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 fun and i like his approach to his his jokes i like um the the way like the the freaking slavery joke that that was okay. That slavery joke. I felt like he could have, especially with the way he he approached it. I felt like he could have did a lot more. Like he definitely like that's that's a joke that usually because off of controversy alone, especially nowadays. I don't know when this came out. But it's like, depending on how hard you go, that's like a home run joke. And I felt like he didn't, he didn't go as far. He didn't go where I wanted him to go. But it was a great perspective. Um, the slavery joke. The 
first China joke, the American. So back to that. He did. He touched on it on the back end. The entitlement. That's really what it really what like what it really boils down to. Even though laziness is also well, you know what? Now that I think about it, they both coincide because of the laziness of so many people. People have a certain level of entitlement. They just feel like they deserve more than what they're getting or they are too lazy to understand this is your fucking job and people are just asking like i don't know i i like i i like what he said about that and he's absolutely right it's so many people again it doesn't even matter the occupation i've been to some shitty mcdonald's um, again, I've worked, I worked in corporate America. I know some execs who have no idea what the fuck they are doing. Uh, oh man, that, 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 that again, the headline alone made me a fan. The headline alone made me a fan. Um, I gotta say he, he he's not one of my favorites. Again, you know he didn't he didn't crack me up with anything, and I didn't have like a, a George Carlin moment where even if I don't necessarily laugh, I walk away with a new perspective or appreciation on a thought or an idea. Um, but I did like him. I like them, and I, I I think maybe I need to hit because this was really edited. Like Comedy Central, I don't know, I don't know how this was edited. Like if like I don't know if this is actually how it was sequenced on TV, but like they didn't even try to hide the edits. Like literally, joke, edit, joke, edit, joke, edit. Like this was one of the most edited stand-up specials I think I've ever seen. So, um, I, 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 I definitely feel like I got to hear something else on him. Maybe I need to watch the show. Again, all those years that I've, you know, just scroll past Comedy Central and see, I, I, I saw it and I just never clicked on it. So maybe I need to, y'all let me know. Do I need to watch some Tosh.0? Uh, I, you know, I could tell, again, you don't last, especially in a field like comedy, for 10 plus years, and you suck. So, and he doesn't suck. I just, I just feel like I got to hear something else. Something that's not too edited. But again, I like his approach. I like his way of thinking. And I want to, I want to hear something else from him. I do. I want to, I want to delve deeper into his, his, his jokes and see, I want to see something less edited and maybe it'll give me a better perspective on this guy. But again, the slavery joke, the China, the first China joke, the Americans lazy as shit joke, which is completely, I mean, it's just straight up facts. And the the first part of the joke where he talked about everybody talks about how America is the best is it is usually middle America, and um, and listen, I completely agree. I I think America we definitely are up there, um, but there are some countries that are kicking our ass in a lot of important political fields that um, you know, hey, I I, I you know I I'm not a country ranker but yeah um daniel tosh how do 90 percent of americans have a job i enjoyed it i want to hear more from him y'all request and recommend so i could delve deeper into this guy i i, I like i like him i just gotta see something else i gotta see something else so Y'all requested and recommended, and I want to check it out. But as always, like, comment, subscribe.
I appreciate y'all for watching. Until next time, peace.